together now. Okay, so for this section, this is geometry section 1-3, measuring segments. And for this section, actually, like, hold on. All right, so your vocabulary for this section is the word coordinate, the word distance, the word congruent segments, the word midpoint, and the word segment bisector. So when I'm grading your notes, I'm going to look for these five definitions. So at the end, before you turn them in, make sure all uh, these five things are on there. Um, 1-3 is measuring segments. Our learning objective is to find and compare lengths of segments. And we can use number operations, which is adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, to find and compare lengths of segments. So our first postulate is 1-5, the ruler postulate. And please feel free to summarize this. Um, just because the book writes it in this terminology, if this at all is too mathy for you, convert it into real language, and I, during this lesson, will help you guys with that. So let's read it together. Every point on a line can be paired with a real number. This makes a one-to-one -one correspondence between points on the line and the real numbers. The real number that corresponds to a point is called the coordinate of a point. I definitely think you should have the real number that corresponds to a point is called the coordinate point for sure put that in your notes and you should definitely draw this picture All right, so let me read this through and then I'll highlight the important things that you need to write down. The ruler postulate allows you to measure lengths of segments using a given unit and find distances between points on a number line. Consider the line AB at the right. The distance between point AB is the absolute value of the difference of their coordinates or absolute value of A minus B. So here's what you do. Subtract A and B, find the absolute value. So if you want it in words, you can say, subtract A and B and find the absolute value. But we should probably not make that so ginormous. more like 18. There we go. So, make sure you write that down. And then write the math part of it. A minus B. And then make sure you say the distance between points A and B is absolute value of A minus B. Please draw the picture as well. All right, so when you guys are taking notes, the instructions say include the example problems. Well, if you look at the example problems that they give you are really long and tedious. And to, for you to write everything down, especially if this is, there's four of them, it, it could be overwhelming to get these problems down. What I would rather you do is read through the problem number one and then in your notes, write down the goddess. So in your so we're going to read through problem number one and then we're going to do the goddess together and the goddess is what's going to go in your notes. So if I look at my goddess, it says what are UV and SV on the number line above? So I definitely want to include this number line in my notes. So that way when I look back on it, I know how I got UV and SV. Okay, so let's read through this problem together. The coordinate of S is negative 4, and the coordinate of t is 8. So 
So we want to find that we're, the first thing we're going to do is find the distance between S and T. So we're going to subtract the 2, so negative 4 minus 8 gives you negative 12. And then we're going to take the absolute value. Absolute value of negative 12. And just to remind you, absolute value takes a positive number and keeps a positive, takes a negative number and makes it positive. So at the end of the day, we're always positive, which is why it's my favorite function. Um, so we're going to do the same operation with UV and SV on the number line. All right, so let's do UV. So this all goes on, I'll put a little whoop on there so it looks like a U. Um, so UV is the absolute value of 10 minus V is 14. 10 minus 14 is negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. And then SV is negative 4 minus 14. Negative 4 minus 14 is negative 18. Absolute value of negative 18 is 18. And if you want to think of it like this, from 14 to 0 is 14. So from 14 to 0 is 14 units. And then I go back 4 more to make 18. So just to visually check. All right. Everybody got that? All right. So postulate one dot. We definitely need this postulate. He is going to come up probably for the rest of this class. So if three points A, B, and C are collinear and B is between A and C, then A plus B, sorry, AB plus BC is equal to AC. So I definitely, the first thing I want you to do is draw this picture. So put, put on, on your paper a line, put A, put B, and put C. A and B are your, A and C are your endpoints. Draw in A, B. Make sure you put the little arrows and the distance measurements on there. Draw in B, C. And then on the bottom, draw in A, C. If you have the picture, then you can just write A, B plus B, C equals A, C. And you don't need all the terminology to go with it. Because this picture explains the terminal, all the words, but in picture form. All right, so we're going to look at problem number two together. And then in our notes, we're going to add the got it. All right, so we have a scenario here. Oops, my arrow. Um, we have a scenario here where... We have an endpoint E, a mid a point in the interior F, and an endpoint G. So we're going to use segment addition postulate here, where we know EF, which is from here to here, plus FG, which is from here to here, equals the entire thing from E to G. So here's how they're going to sneak in some algebra on you. So we're going to replace EF with the expression they give us for EF, which is 8x minus 14. And then we're going to replace FG with the expression they give us for FG. And they tell us at the beginning that the entire segment length is 59. So we're going to say it equals 59. The process for that is called substitution. 
Then we're going to simplify these, which is why we did all that solving equations review, so that we are ready for this step. We're going to go 8x plus 4x is 12x, <coughs> minus 14 plus 1 is minus 13. Then we're going to add 13 to both sides, so we add 13 and add 13. We get 12x equals 72. Then we're going to divide both sides by 12 to get x equals 6. We are then going to say, okay, I had some of you guys get back to me about your 1-3 um, quiz. This is not the answer to the question. Just because we got x equals 6, we have to always go back and read what they're looking for. We're looking for EF and FG. So we have to take that 6 and put it back in for x to give us 8 times 6, which is 48, minus 14, which is 34. So the answer is 34, and then we're going to take that x and put it back, put 6 in. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25. So the answer to this problem is 34 and 25. So let's do the got it problem, and this is what goes in your notes. So let's highlight it. So make sure you draw the picture, because when we look back on it later, if I just have random letters, not going to make any sense. We want our notes to be a good resource for us. So we're going to, we know that JL is equal to 120, so I'm going to put that right here on my picture. This is J L. What are J K and K L? So they actually we want J K and K L, which I think are Superman's parents. J K and K L. J L. <laughs> okay. So we are going to. Say, use the segment addition postulate. We know JK plus KL is going to equal JL. That's the segment addition postulate, or as I like to call, SEG. SEG. Segment addition postulate. It's the SEG. Then I'm going to substitute. So for JK, I'm going to put 4X plus 6. For KL, I'm going to put 7x plus 15. And for JL, I'm going to put 120. Then I'm going to do my algebra because I'm wicked awesome at algebra. And I'm going to combine my like terms. 4x's and 7x's is 11x's. 6 and 15 is 30, 21. It's equal to 120. And then I'm going to subtract 21 from both sides. And I'm going to get 11x's is equal to 9 to 9. And I'm going to divide both sides by 11. And I'm going to get x equals 9, and I'm done. Just kidding, we're not done. We just have x equals 9, and actually the question is asking, what are j, k, and k, l? The, the folks at home aren't going to see how awesome that was. It's pretty sweet. So we're going to find j, k first, which was 4x plus 6, which was 4 times 9 plus 6, which is 36 plus 6, which is also known as 42. Ooh. Then we're going to find KL, which is 7x plus 15, which is 7 times 9 plus 15, which is 63 plus 15, which is 78. Boom, boom. Now I'm done. <laughs> Bye. All right, segment addition postulate. Okay, 
one thing that we're going to be using a lot is the word congruent. So please put this in your, this is actually a memorize this word thing. So congruent means they have the same length. If you have congruent segments, it means they have the same length. If you have congruent angles, it means they have the same measure. And it's that equal sign with a squiggly sign on top of it. Equal sign with a squiggly sign. So if AB is equal to CD, then line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD. So do you see how AB represents a distance? And line segment AB, which is written differently, represents the line segment. So we say line segments are congruent if the measure between the points A, B, and C, D is equal. So this is the, the hoity-toity people in geometry. They don't like to use, when you're talking about line segments, they don't like you to use the word equal. They want you to use congruent because we're talking about segments. All right. So let's look at problem number three, and just for funds, we're going to sneak peek at the got it number three. In the, use the diagram above. All right, so let's put this diagram on our paper. So it's a little number line. Point A is at, so go from negative two to 16, counting by twos. And put in the points A at negative two, B at three, C at 5, D at 10, and E at 14. All right, the question is, are AC and BD congruent? So let's look at points AC and look at points BD and find the distance between the two. So AC is negative 2 minus 5 which is negative 7. Absolute value of negative 7 is 7. BD is 3 minus 10. That's equal to negative 7. Absolute value of negative 7 is 7. Yes, AC and BD are equal, so we can say the line segments AC and BD are congruent. All right, let's do this, got it together. So we've already added the number line in our notes. Now we're going to add um, the problem, we're going to see if AB is congruent to DE. So AB is negative 2 minus 3, or negative 5, or 5. And DE is 10 minus 14, which is negative 4 which absolute value of negative 4 is 4. 5 is not equal to 4, so AB is not congruent to DE. Let's look at the reasoning together real quick. To find AC in problem 3, suppose you subtract negative 2 from 5. So negative 2, so 5 minus negative 2. Do you get the same result and why? So originally AC was 7, and then they're suggesting we subtract <laughs> minus negative 2. And we get 7. We did get the same result. Because minusing a negative number is the same as adding, and that's how we got those nine results. All right, rolling along. The midpoint of a segment is the point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So how would we write that? How would we write that as our own words? Because I don't go around saying that a midpoint 
of a segment is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. How would we say that more in our own regular terms? All right, so the midpoint of a segment is the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments or cuts the segment in half. That's what a midpoint does. If you know something is right in the middle, you know the half on the right and the half on the left are exactly the same. And we're going to use that property to solve stuff. Woo! Um, please draw this picture, which is why I included it. Because it does two things. It shows you a midpoint and it talks about a bisector. When, um, in geometry, when two line segments are the same, we're going to use tick marks to demonstrate that they're equal. So I'm going to say AB is congruent to BC by putting two tick marks here and two tick marks here. So I, this is a really important picture, even though in the book it looks really unassuming. Okay, so let's look at how we use the midpoint to find distances. So if Q is the midpoint of PR, so Q splits it right in half, then we can say PQ Uh, is equal to QR. So this distance is the same. That's what the midpoint does for us. So we're going to take this guy here and set him equal to this guy here. When we do that, we subtract 5 from both sides, we add 7 to both sides, and we get x equals 8. And thankfully, the instructions say fine. Um, but we're going to use that to find PQ, QR, and PR. So I'm going to plug in 8 into PQ. 6 times 8 is 48, minus 7 is 41. I'm going to plug it in for QR. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 1 is 41. They should be equal, right? If we have found a true midpoint, then it, both of them should be 41. So then we're going to find PR and add those two together. 41 plus 41 is 82. So the three of those are the answer. Now let's see if we got it. Okay, so let's look at number four. Is it necessary to substitute 8 in for x in the expression for qr in order to find qr? Explain. So did we need to plug in 8 for qr in order to find it? So because pq is congruent and equal to qr, we didn't need to do any math to find QR. We just say it's equal to PQ, so it's got to be 41. And then for PR, you do have to double. For some people, adding 41 and 41 is easier than multiplying 41 by 2. So, um, all right, so let's do a sample problem here. This is definitely going in your notes. So draw the diagram. U is the midpoint of TV. What are TU, UV, and TV? And thankfully, this is the end of our section. So. All right. So if I know that um, U is the midpoint, I can say TU is equal to UV. So I know 8x plus 11 is equal to 12x minus 1. Subtract 8 from both sides. Sorry, subtract 8x from both sides. And 
add one. Divide by four. I get x equals three. That does not answer any of my questions. Darn it. But let's find out what TU is. And then we can let everything cascade from there. So TU is 8 times x plus 11, which is 8 times 3 plus 11, which is 24 plus 11, which is 35. If TU is 35, what's UV? 35. And then what's TV? 70. Easy peasy. Lemon squeeze. 